Uh, Amy, what advice would you have for other teachers that are trying to implement curriculum or trying to work with special ed kids? Um, I mean, the curriculum is really key on, just in my classroom alone, I've seen such a change in behaviors from the kids. Mm. They really, you know, they know that they're being taught what everyone else is being taught now. You know, I, it's kind of disrespectful to me when you're teaching mm. kids, you know, below their ability level and you're not giving them the skills that they need. And the kids really realize that and they're more eager to learn now. Mm. And we also spend a lot more time on the behavior. So I, I feel like they're a lot more successful going back to the other schools in our building, preparing for graduation. Or going back to their home school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's some of the feedback been that you've received from the parents on this? I mean, do they notice a shift? They certainly do, especially in the work that they're seeing at home. You know, the they, parents come in for conferences and report card pickup, and they talk about, you know, how proud they are to see the work that their kids are doing and that they also now feel that they're more prepared to go back to their home school or to graduate because they are now accessing the same curriculum that their peers have. So it's kind of leveling the playing field out for them a little bit. And then the curriculum, it's designed to be year-round because our kids go oh, yeah. over the summer. Mm -hmm. So how does it change over the summer? Um, well, the kids aren't there for as long, so we pretty much divide the, the kids up to different classes, what they need to be taking. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, I don't whatever yeah. classes they mm -hmm. need to catch up on. Mm -hmm. Um, that's great. Now, one thing I wonder, how have you been involved in terms of, I know there's been a lot of external presentations. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of feedback have you gotten from the other staff? Is there a level of excitement to know that other people are using this, that they were part of developing? or? Yeah, definitely. I mean, at first you kind of get a reaction from the teachers like, oh my goodness, how could we ever do this? It looks so hard. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then once you talk to them and you say, you know, I was in the same boat. I've been there where you have no books, where you have no paper, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Then the, then the teachers seem to really get on board and get excited about the fact that this is possible and you really can't do it. What, what would you say some of the biggest challenges? And are there some challenges in implementing this curriculum? You know, I really haven't found any. Wow, that's great. I don't, I don't, I'm not like tooting our own horn, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's made my life so much easier. Cause I, it's, you know, we get to work together and we have a, a direct outline to look at to see what we're going to be teaching next. What kind of ongoing support do you get to be able to implement this? I mean, are there meetings? Are there mm -hmm. ongoing? We okay. do a lot of sharing among teachers of, you know, for Hamlet, what were you doing? Kind of help out. Or especially when we get new kids in and, you know, they're either a lot higher or a lot lower than your other kids. It's nice to go to talk to the other teachers to decide the best way to address that. Also, um, if there's any... Like, I did a poetry unit. I think there was a picture of it. Oh, yeah. I'll get and then, <laughs> But it, we do a lot of sharing that way. And we're like, hey, the kids really enjoyed this, and it went along with this part of the curriculum, mm -hmm. and we talk about it. And then it Tell me about nicely. the poetry unit. I will find that one. <laughs> the, the kids were just working um, on yeah. different types of poetry they were learning. So we you know, made the incentive of you get this fancy paper, and you get to make a big board and everything, and then the... The rest mm -hmm. of the kids really liked seeing it, so then they wanted to do poetry, and it was mm -hmm. the whole, it was fun. What are some, of, how is technology incorporated into this curriculum? We do a lot of research, a lot of research the kids do. Also for our career ed classes, they, you know, look online at resumes, at job applications, that sort of thing. Um, we also have the kids doing PowerPoint presentations. They created a website at the beginning of the year. Oh, that's great. Yeah, they do a lot of fun stuff, and it's all based on sharing what they learned, which then they, you know, they take that ownership of the learning process, of making sure they're meeting their standards. Well, and I know, and it's it's part of the whole curriculum that we've been able to package, is that, you know, uh, anybody who purchases it also gets the curriculum on a DVD or a CD, mm -hmm. and, you know, and they get the other supports. Have you been involved in any of that support to anybody who's purchased uh, the curriculum? Yeah, we did um, some of the training, and we went over... Because we also, you know, have it on a zip drive. So mm -hmm. we can, you know, just say, well, if you look on page 75 of the English curriculum or whatever, you know, <laughs> it's really easy to just refer back to that and then answer questions that way. And actually, that I'm glad you bring that up because I know that's something that each teacher has the curriculum mm -hmm. on. A, can you describe that a little bit? What is it that they have? The jump drive? or Yeah, we just have the zip drives with the entire curriculum on it. So we all have the exact same thing and access to it whenever we need. We've also lately been doing a lot of lesson plan sharing. So we just add whatever we want to our zip drives. Mm -hmm. And then we just can just pass them back and forth. Which is great. It's a great use of technology. It really is. Um, well, thank you very much, 